Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rob Sutton with Bike 198. We are in my garage here today to fix this mess. I do not have a convenient bike storage solution here in the garage, so we are actually going to organize all of this, and I partnered up with the guys at Steady Rack to get that accomplished. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys the install, and then give you a review on what I think of the racks after we get everything situated. So let's get started. All right, so what we have here are actually the mountain and the classic rack. And the difference you're gonna find here is that the classic rack is gonna be more suitable for your road bikes, regular mountain bikes, and hybrids. It takes up to a 2.4 tire. Now for bikes that have larger tires, like the 2.8s on my Trek rail, you can up to the mountain version, which will also hold up to 77 pounds. So the installation on these is supposed to be pretty simple. You just gotta find some studs to drill them into, measure the length of your bike, and then bring it off just a couple inches so it doesn't hit the ground. Then it also includes the tire stop on the bottom that would be installed into the stud as well. So let's get started by finding the studs and then measuring out the bikes. All right guys, so as you can tell, the install went really easily. As long as you can find studs and basically get six bolts in the wall, you're set up, ready to go, and ready to rack the bikes. Luckily for us, the spacing worked out perfectly on the studs, and it also worked out for the heights of the bike. Since my wife's bike is a lot shorter than mine, and then my son's is shorter than hers, I didn't have to worry about staggering the racks at all. If you have a lot of bikes that are all the same size, you're going to want to have to kind of stagger them up and down from each other so that you don't hit handlebars. But overall, really simple install, and they got off the floor, which is what we we're after. So looking at the different racks, I prefer the mountain ones because we look for really big tires on our chunky terrain here but if you have a lot of road bikes hybrid bikes or some other bikes that don't have as big a tires you can definitely go for the classic rack it still fits up to a 2.4 tire which is pretty big so my bike has a pretty long fork on it and really wide handlebars and at the farthest point out when the bikes are folded like you see behind me they are 40 inches out from the wall now obviously when you swing them out perpendicular from the wall it's going to be just a couple inches taller than your bike is sitting on the ground that will give you an idea of where you can mount these and position them in your garage where they will not be hitting cars and other things that you might have stored. So now that we're over the install process, what do I actually think of the racks themselves? I love them, actually. So we got the bikes off the floor like I was looking for, which is a huge space savings in this garage for us. They're also nicely organized on the wall right behind me, and they are easy to get in and out, which was going to be super important. My eight-year-old and my wife can both get their bikes on and off the wall very easy with very little effort. One of the additional pluses of the rack that I really didn't think of until we got them up on the wall is that they keep the tires essentially off the wall itself. So you don't get any big black marks all over the wall like I was getting previously with some other hanging designs we had. The only mark you might get is when you have them fully folded in on the bottom where the edge of the tire might meet the wall, but the front tire doesn't touch the wall at all as it is off and on the rack. That was really nice when it kept to a more of a clean look right here in the garage. One thing to keep in mind during the install process though is if you have kid bikes with 20 inch tires, you need to watch your spacing on the wall as far as the height goes. What I found is the 20 inch tires like to sink further down into the rack. So we had to go a full six inches higher than the recommended one and a half for my son's bike. It didn't affect him putting it in and out of the rack all that much, but it did keep it 
off the ground just that one inch of the wheel. So definitely keep that in mind when it comes to the kids' bikes. You are not going to use that standard definition that they have in the manual to get it slightly off the ground. Those 24 and 20 inch tires are going to fit into the rack a little bit differently. So test it out before you go drill all your holes. The racks are also really well made. That Trek rail on the end weighs 50 pounds. And when I'm racking it on and off the steady rack, it doesn't feel like it's going to bend or twist or break as I'm putting that really heavy bike on the wall. So any bike that you could put on the wall, whether it be a downhill bike or an e-bike will still be fine, even given the extra weight. As far as the negatives go, I really can't think of any, unless you're just not wanting to vertically rack your bikes, you want another solution that's on the ground. As far as vertically racking goes, this is about as easy as it can get. And the pricing is right. The quality is up there and it really saved us a lot of room on the floor of our garage so we're very happy with the install and the result. There are other ways that you could vertically rack your bikes on the wall for cheaper. We have done it in the past but you really lose out on some of the better quality features of these racks by keeping the marks off the wall and making it really easy to roll in and out. When I look at some of the other hook designs that may be a lot cheaper out on the market, they are a lot harder to get on and off the wall if you're an eight year old or like my wife. So these are really easy to get on and off and that is the big selling point to me. I also love the flat fact that they fold towards the wall and take up even less space. So do you guys have any experience with Steady Rack? Please let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions or concerns, I'll be happy to answer those as well. If you guys want more reviews and tutorials like this in the future, please like and subscribe this video. And until then, on to the next one. Thanks guys, see ya.